Jenny here. It's been nine months since I've had surgery that removed the cancer in my body and put me in remission, so I thought I would give a little health update. So, welcome to my channel. For anybody that's new here, a little overview. This is mainly a baking channel. Started off as a baking channel, put it that way. It has now morphed into a baking slash life update channel. Um, so I take you along on my my little adventures, my little journeys out and about in the world. <laughs> sometimes just regular shopping, sometimes I get to do things like go to the you know park with a friend or um, I did, just did a, a lighthouse tour. So those are few and far between. Don't do a, ha a whole heck of a lot in life, although I'm trying to do a little bit more after having gone through this whole journey. Um, but also going back to making some more cooking videos. So you get a little bit of each right now. Anyways, yes, I was diagnosed with a cancerous tumor back in February of 23, so I have all those videos on here um, just to share my journey, to keep a journal for myself of what I've gone through, and to hopefully help anybody else that's going through something like this. So, come join our wonderful little community. We'd love to have you. So, as I said, nine months ago, on December 7th, I had surgery that they were able to, thank goodness, go in there and um, remove all my cancer and uh, put me in remission. So it's been good. It's been a journey. I've been told it will take a year to kind of fully heal. And I can see that it's, it's still happening. I'm still healing. Doing a heck of a lot better though at this nine month mark. It's, it's been wonderful. So overall, I feel really good. I feel normal. There are times I actually even forget that I've gone through anything because I feel so good and I'm living normal life. So then something will kind of hit me like I said, I go to the bathroom and I'm like, oh yeah, I got this bag on my stomach. That, this is the way, the way I have to do things now. And kind of gives me that reminder or just in doing regular life and thinking, oh yeah, yeah, I used to not be able to do this. So I'm very grateful for um, the state that I'm at right now, for the position I'm in, for feeling really good. So, um, yeah, that's overall. Um, I do have a little sheet of notes here so I don't forget anything. So, <laughs> um, I'm saying, oh yeah, my, you know, my stamina is back. And then I said, I did climb to the top of a lighthouse. I thought I was going to be winded. By the time I you know, got halfway up, so I put myself like last in the group of people that we had doing this, um, the group that was there, I should say, because there were like 16 of us, or so only seven were family members, <laughs> and then the others. But um, I had no problem with that, although partly I think that was due to, <laughs> I actually realized that there was no handrail to the right, and um, fear kind of kicked in, and so the adrenaline kicked in, and so <laughs> I had no problem with stamina. <laughs> Um, I was just kind of in, um, uh, I don't know, hyper mode of concentrating on the wall and making sure I could get to the top of the lighthouse and then it was the fear of heights and looking out over the edge and again, I was just, I, again, my palms are sweating. I did, every time I talk about it, when I edited that video, when I, was, when I was there doing it in person, my palms are sweaty, I get tears to my eyes just because of, um, you know, the panic I had, got a little bit of being up high and having other people close to the rail and just... So I don't know, past life, something or other, I think maybe I died from falling from a high height or something. I don't know, but in any case. So my stamina is good. <laughs> um, and then being able to do just regular things, doing regular life, like being able to cook, being able to be in the kitchen for hours, you know, especially on Saturdays these days or Sundays, I will try to cook um, a meal for both my mom and myself. So, you know, a pot of soup or whatever. So it requires a lot of cutting up of vegetables and things. And, and then usually doing the dishes. And so I'm in the kitchen for four hours and it's um, a matter of, yeah, I, I can do that. I, you know, come to a point where I'm like, hey, I've been standing in the kitchen now, you know, cooking for hours and I feel okay. Whereas a year ago, I couldn't do that. I was in so much pain that I could do a little bit and then I would have to go sit, you know, so I would do either a couple dishes and go sit or I would just hurry my way through them. And even though I was in pain, I'm like, I'm just, going to tolerate it and get through this because, you know, so I can, but also then doing dishes when there is a smaller amount or whatever. Um, but to now I can be able to do, I can do regular life stuff. So, yeah, and another, 
Another thing, being able to um, like lift things. I was able to help move a couch a couple weeks ago that, um, you know, selling some things on Marketplace <laughs> and having to be the one that would help move the couch. And I was able to do that. And uh, again, so being, feeling good. Um, so then we'll go through the body, head to toe type of thing on top of my head. So my hair, um, I was having the hair thinning. I did not have hair loss, but my hair thinned a lot. And so anytime I would run my fingers through, I would have a handful of hair. And I don't have that anymore. In fact, it's just normal. I could, I could do that and not have any hair. <laughs> so the hair is back to normal. Um, so that's good. We got my shoulders. My shoulders are still hurting, but that's kind of a whole other problem. Um, the right shoulder, I did kind of, they figure hurt the rotator cuff with, because of my having laid on the couch when I couldn't sit for three weeks and just getting things off of the side table and all that and the type of movement I was doing and repetitive. Um, and then I did go through the therapy and she got my shoulder kind of as good as she could and said, basically, it's time for a cortisone shot. And I thought, well, I'm just going to give it some more time because I have kind of hurt my shoulder before in doing some like an exercise class. And after a couple of weeks, it healed itself. Well, this has been going on since January and hasn't healed itself. And then pretty much after therapy stopped, the left shoulder kicked in also. And now my left shoulder also hurts. So they're both about the same or I can I can lift you know, only so high, I can't get up higher. I can go forward a little bit. Going around behind my back, I can't really do. <laughs> um, so, you know, fall is coming, the weather's getting cooler. I kind of need to put a jacket on a little bit here. And that really hurts to try to do that. So I'm at the point of, I need to contact my doctor and see if I can get a cortisone shot and what the steps are for that. Because my sister-in-law just had one done and said she actually had to get an MRI before they would do the shot. So I might need an X-ray or some type of a scan before they'll give me the shot. So again, kind of a problem that happened with this, but also now it's kind of developed into its own problemy thing that will need to be taken care of. Uh, my port, as of today, I finally, <laughs> gosh, nine months. Port, port's still there, looking good, still good. I can finally touch it. Um, I got my port in March of 23. Some people were saying within a couple of weeks, within a couple of months, I mean, especially by the three month mark, they were like, oh yeah, it's good, I'm fine. I was still having sensitivity with even just a shirt on it. Sometimes I'd be walking or doing whatever. I'm like, I'm just I'm moving things or um, even just to touch it, having the shirt fall on it, do whatever, or in the shower when I would, you know, when I'm washing up and I'd try to go, it, uh, it would still be a little bit painful. I would still feel just a just a sensitivity, a, a pinchy pain, almost as I as I would touch it. But today, I'm like touching it. I'm like, oh, I can actually, I can, I can actually feel the pork. I can feel the shape of it, and have I can move my skin around on it. Which is, oh, feels kind of goofy, but it doesn't hurt. <laughs> so that's only taken a year and a half. <laughs> um, don't know how long I'll have that in yet. Like I said, doctors hope you know wanted me to have it in for at least a year. So that's the December point. But if it's not bothering me, um, they can keep it in longer. So it's just a matter of getting it flushed like every three months. Um, and again, we'll see how long um, tests are going to go in between. If it's going to be like three month tests, or I think I'm going to be at six months for testing. Um, so we'll see about that. Again, it's not bothering me, so it can stay in and get the same thing. I'd rather have the safety of that and have them be able to use that because that still hurts less than. Not as much as, now that it's not being used every day, it hurts as much as, if not less than, in reality, them trying to poke, you know, poke a vein <laughs> to put a needle in for um, the dye for the CT scans or whatnot, even blood draws. They can use that for blood draws and it's good. Don't have to, have to worry. Um, down to the abdomen. Uh, the abdomen is still just a tad sensitive. Not bad, not bad. It healed up pretty well. Let me see if I show you my my scar. Um, I stopped doing the massaging at probably the seven month mark. I think I went through between six and seven months. Um, I was doing the, uh, the Aquaphor um, lotion stuff that I was just, I was massaging. I was, you know, massaging the whole stomach area, um, the whole scar line. And I kind of stopped that. The, the scar line is, is fine. Um, my normal, I do have, you know, the indent of where the, the top of it is, where they kind of tied it off. I do have some lines in here now of my, <laughs> just from, I don't know, 
you know, the, the where, where I'm at. Again, you haven't gained a little weight or whatever. This is kind of my normal weight, though, but um, a little bit of that. But the scar line looks good. There's, you know, nothing going on with it. It's a healthy pink, but I still have a little bit, I think, from under the rib, either where they, this, where they cut the muscle and a um, little sensitivity in this area. So it's much better than it was, uh, but it looks, looks good, looks healthy. Um, I don't have the sensitivity to just my shirt laying on it which is good. Again, it's more to touch. Or if I'm going to try to carry something, you know, carry the laundry basket down or something, you know, and that hits my belly. Um, or whatever to say, that it's still just a little bit painful. So that hasn't completely gone away. Um, but other than that, like I said, yeah, having a shirt on it, having the sheets, I don't know, whatever, you know, the weight of the sheets or blanket on me at nighttime, that doesn't hurt. Sometimes when I roll over in bed and I'm on my side or something and I'm just kind of either squished and up, <laughs> then I kind of feel that a little bit. Even with my port once in a while, if I'm on that side and I'm, I sleep, <laughs> my arms up, I'm kind of squished in that. Um, that sometimes, like I said, I would feel the port or I feel it in my stomach just a little bit. But you, within a couple minutes after, you know, I settle in within like five minutes, it goes away. I'm good. So, so that's good. Um, the colostomy. That is good. Um, I was having a couple blockages in August. I had like three different blockages, you know, like a week apart from each other or so. So that was kind of interesting. I was like, what, what the heck is going on? So again, I do keep a food diary of what I am eating. So if something does come up, I can kind of try to figure out, well, what did I eat 24 hours ago? What could it possibly be? Um, it still seems that I could eat anything that I want to. It's just I have to eat smaller quantities. So, you know, some of the things that have come up, it's a matter of, um, well, I had three pieces of extra cheese pizza or something and I'll get a stomach ache. Whereas I'm like, okay, well, I had, the last time I had pizza, I had two pieces, maybe it was a sausage pizza, um, and I was fine. Or something like a salad. I've done that where I've made um, smaller salads for myself or whatever. Those have been fine. And then one day I was making a salad for my daughter and I, I think, well, she likes a bigger salad and I, I like salad, so I... So I made two of the big, kind of like serving dish bowl size, and then I ended up with a, a stomach ache. And you can, you can tell the blockage, stomach ache, it wasn't like... I had one the other night that was more like I felt like I was going to end up having diarrhea, which I didn't that night. I thought for sure while I was sleeping laying in bed, my bag was going to fill up, and it didn't. But the next day, later in the day, I actually did have diarrhea for, you know, an hour. <laughs> bag filled up three times. Um, yeah, don't really know why that happened, but I, there's a different stomach aches. So you get to be able to tell your own body and, and what it feels like and, what, and the blockage stomach ache and I've got that down. <laughs> I know what that one feels like. Um, so hopefully I'm, I'm good again for a while because I, I had them. I knew what it was like. I was good for a while and then I had like those three in a row. The one of them that lasted that 12 hours. That was pretty bad, but I got through it. Um, and, and it's like, okay, and now I've been good again for weeks, so knock on wood. That, um, that's been all right. So we'll see. Again, it's just a matter of trial and error, and again, all through life, depending on what I'm going to eat, where I'm at, it's just a matter of paying attention. So, and listening to my intuition. There are times where I'll be eating something, and I'll be kind of like, you know, I think that's enough. And then, oh, but there's only just a little bit left. I really don't want to leave that. That's what happened the one time, and then I finished it off, and then I had the stomach ache. I'm <laughs> like, shoot. <laughs> So now if I get that little thought of, okay, that's enough, and I'm like, oh, all right, I'm, I'm going to stop now. I better, I can, you know, save that, put that away for leftovers for later. Or... Other than that, changing the bag, um, that's gone much better. So I'm finally at that point of um, where when I'm changing the bag, it practically falls off of me at this point. I have the outer, um, the outer sticky ring, which is almost like a Band-Aid type material that still sticks really well and then by the time I'm taking that off there's an inside um, rubber ring and that one sticky barrier whatever um that one still sticks on a little bit but almost so that one almost kind of falling off and then the barrier ring that go that i put on the inside that will stick on me um but again the bag comes off really easily these days and i don't have the barrier ring residue so in the beginning like i said i was going through a good six seven adhesive remover wipes and all the videos I'd watch of everybody else that has a, an ostomy, they were using like one or two wipes and they'd be done. They'd be like, oh yeah, you know, clean, done. <laughs> and I'm like, how? 
I had so much barrier ring residue around my stoma that it was taking me six wipes to, you know, get that all nicely cleaned up. And now, obviously, I think my skin is um, at a place where it's used to it. So you can kind of tell when the bag comes off that skin that's under the bag is more shiny and kind of more slick. It has a different texture to it than my other side of my stomach, my, my regular skin. Um, so I find that interesting. That, But even with my ileostomy for having that for nine months, I still had more barrier ring residue. Um, and I don't know if that has to do with the consistency of the output or not, because that mine was more liquidy then. But even still, like I said, the people that I watch have ileostomies and they clean up fast. So I'm at that point now where I really don't have a lot of barrier ring residue. Um, I can clean up easily, so that's really nice. My output has been at a good consistency. It's like a pudding consistency. That's been consistent um, for for months now. So so that's good. So again, it's it's at that little bit of a you know a thicker amount. And I also know my my stoma hasn't really changed um, hasn't changed sizes in a while. So I can cut the the hole to the size that I need. So again, there's not much, there's not even much barrier ring underneath, so there's not much to break down so that the output doesn't get on my skin to cause any problems. So my skin has been healthy. Um, again, I'm I'm still good with these bags. My skin hasn't changed that it has a reaction or anything to these same bags. I would still like to try a different bag because I'm still using the see-through ones. <laughs> I tried that one gray one um, for a while and that one, it did seem to have a little reaction with my skin. I would like to try it again to see if there is that or else I'm going to stick with this bag but just get the one that's um, not see-through. I have to call in order to change that. I was going to do that a couple days ago because my orders used to come on the 24th and then they started like bumping up and bumping up then it was like the 15th and then it was like the 9th. And I went in the other day so I could change things up but it was like, oh your order is, get, you know, is ready to ship. <laughs> Okay, no time to change it then. <laughs> so during this month, I'll have to try to do that before next month's order is ready. But that's okay. It's working well for me, so same. You know, whether I want to change it up or not, I have this nice little bag cover that works for me, so I'm okay with that. Uh, let's see, moving down uh, my butt area. You know, with having my, my butt all sewn up, um, it looks good. It looks healthy now the swelling has gone down um, I don't have the chafing going on on the butt cheeks I mean, lots of good information here <laughs> TMI ish type information but you know again if this helps somebody else because who knows there's not much not many people talk about this okay I, ha I haven't seen put it this way I haven't seen any videos of people talking about this problem I've heard about the proctocolectomy the Barbie butt type surgeries of how people have had it and, and maybe the problem they've had with taking a while for it to heal. Um, so mine did take a little while to heal and all that, but I'm still at the point of, I don't know, I, I still seem to get wet down there. I'm wet in the area and so when I'm walking around, if I'm exercising, when I'm taking my walk, I still seem to chafe and that just hurts. So I do still have the cream that I gotten from the radiologist and I haven't used that in a long time though. Um, that does have like a little bit of numbing agent in there and so that helps with a little bit of the pain. Otherwise, I don't know, my mom came up with this idea a while ago of using deodorant and I was like, oh hey, yeah, let's try that. So that's kind of what I do on mornings that I for sure know I'm going somewhere or even, <laughs> even most days is it because I try to exercise every morning. Um, I just I put deodorant. I have, I have a separate deodorant. I have one deodorant now for my butt. <laughs> so I just put deodorant along my butt crack, and that seems to work. I'm I'm fine. I don't have the pain. I don't have then the wetness and the chafing and all that. So again, do what works. Other than that, yeah, that area is is doing well and healed healed well. Um, moving down, neuropathy. Um, again, in my hands, it's completely gone. My hands are back to complete normal, 100%. I'm, I'm good. My feet, my right side, I still have it in the, like, in the ball of the foot and the toes. Um, I still feel the numbness there, especially if I don't have shoes on and I'm walking around. I can feel that uh, in the shower, again, when I'm washing my legs or trying to shave. Um, my left side, I still have it like slightly up the left calf. For sure, more in the left foot, um, bottom of the foot. 
is all kind of numb. Like I've been doing my massager, <laughs> trying to do massaging on my shoulders. And um, that hasn't really helped. I tried castor oil on my shoulders. That hasn't really helped either. But I also haven't gone consistently 30 days. So we'll see. But so if I'm barefoot, I take the massager and I've gone on the bottom of my feet. I did that the other day. And yeah, my left foot, I couldn't really feel anything. You know, normally before all this, you try to take the massager to the feet, and I would just be even hysterics laughing because, you know, the feet are so sensitive and it just tickles. But left foot, I can't really feel, and in fact, it gets it gets that tingles. Um, like when you have something fall, you know, a part of your body part falls asleep, your hands fall asleep, and then when you're waking up and you get all those tingles. That's what it feels like, especially when I'm by my toes. And same on my, my right foot. When I was getting up near the toes, it was all that, like, the, the tingles of trying to wake up type of, and I was like, Ooh kind of uncomfortable almost but um, yeah so again getting better but slowly now oh, that's taking its time so but it's okay it's not for me it's not painful it's just more it's numb um, but that's okay so what else do I have in here um, exercising like I said I, I exercise every morning as I try I can do exercise videos so again, way back when, when I was in my 20s, I used to watch um, a person called Denise Austin. And she has obviously her videos online now. And so I can, you know, go to YouTube and find a video and put that on. So I've done multiple of her videos. So depending on how I'm feeling for the day, I throw on a, a you know 30 minute video. I could get through all that depending on the movements. You know, my arms only go up so high. I can't do some of them, <laughs> but I can still do everything else. And otherwise I'll do like a 10 minute video or, and stretching or sometimes if my daughter's home and she's got her own video going, which is usually a, a crime <laughs> type video, I'll just have her turn up the volume and I'll listen to her videos and lay on the floor and do all my stretching, which all still feels good. I feel good afterwards. So it's nice to get all that in. So yeah, exercising, I can, I can do all that. I have the stamina to be able to keep going through and doing that. So that's good. Um, what else? Sleeping? Sleeping is good. I I have slept through the night a couple times. My schedule these days is still I go to bed by like midnight. <laughs> I keep trying to go to bed earlier. It's not happening. Go to bed by, you know, like midnight-ish. Um, sometimes I wake up a little you know, lately. It was in the last few weeks. I really I haven't even have woken up sometimes during the night. Otherwise, I'll be up by 3, 3.30, go to the bathroom. And then I sleep until like, you know, seven-ish, my husband says goodbye, and then I'll get out of bed by like nine o'clock-ish, I'm waking up. But I still wake up every time I roll over. Um, again, whether that's, I'm trying to think if that was kind of normal, did I do that before? Maybe a little bit, but I probably fell back to sleep. Now it's still a matter of, with my bag, I'm just conscious of it, and so when I'm rolling over, I usually put my hand on my bag and then roll to just make sure, even though I'm wearing pajamas, that I don't want the, the tape rolling up or, you know, having the bag fall off type of. So now I have to knock on wood. I haven't had any problems with that. Bag hasn't fallen off at night and bag's not filling up at night um, either anymore. So that's wonderful. I don't have to get up in the middle of the night and change it. Um, empty it, I should say. Not change it, but empty it. Again, ileostomy every four hours you pretty much needed to empty it. And I did have to get up in the middle of the night and empty the ileostomy, this colostomy. I'm able to go through the night. So that's good. In the beginning I was having to get up and still um, empty it and stuff, but the body's finally getting more, again, used to it. Everything's going well. Um, that I'll have to get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. I have to urinate, but I don't have to empty my bag. So that's also good. I'm still half asleep when I go to the bathroom and get myself back into bed. It's all right back to sleep. Um, so that's good. What was my other one? Uh, oh, hot flashes. Hot flashes, I'm still having minimum a couple times a day. I should say minimal. They are minimal. They used to kind of happen like all day long and I would really be hot and sweaty and like, oh my gosh, you know, pulling up my, my pants legs and, and, you know, whatever, pulling up my shirt sitting here. Um, now I'm not at that point. I might get a little bit warm and then it's like, whatever, take a drink of water. If I get up and walk around, it kind of changes the body. At nighttime, I think this kind of used to happen to me anyways at nighttime. Let me know if it happens to you because I think it happens to my, my, my daughter said the same thing. Like when you wake up in the middle of the night, if I wake up, even if I go to the bathroom there too, I may be a little bit hot and I go to the bathroom and I come back and I'm just like, oh, you know, I'm hot, covers off. Ugh. 
And then within like five minutes, I'm like, okay, I'm cold, covers on. <laughs> But I'm not real sweaty or anything. And like I said, during the day, sitting here every once in a while, I'll get warm and it's like, I, I don't know, I, I don't even notice it. It's just a matter of, oh, I'm just a little bit warm, but then I'm, I'm cooling off again. And then it took me a little while, like, oh, you know what? I think these are still hot flashes. <laughs> again, I kind of forgot about that being a thing. So whether again, it's just menopause and my, and my hormones or um, whether it's it's just the whole my body's healing because um, there again they also they took my uterus and ovaries and all that so I, I don't have any hormones coming from that anymore so, but whatever the body is still producing by you know by itself whatever else produces stuff maybe have something to do with that i don't know but um yeah so i don't have that as much again that's also a symptom i've heard others talk about that they get the hot flashes a lot after having, you know, having sort of having going through the cancer treatments, um, treatments itself, and or after. Um, I think that was really about it. So, like I said, yeah, overall, I'm doing fantastic. Um, I'm I'm very happy. I'm very grateful. I'm grateful I'm still here. I'm grateful that I'm living normal life that I am back to normal I can um, I can do stuff I can like I said I forget about it once in a while that that I even went through all this um, so that's nice I'm happy I can you know can do things again I can go out with my girlfriends and go out to eat and not have to worry about where we're going what you know what I'm eating where there's a bathroom um, I can do that I can Go do a lighthouse tour. I can sit in the car and travel. We went to um, Devil's Lake. We went for that. It was like two-hour drive to get out there. Again, it was not a matter of okay, where are the bathrooms along the way? Where are the gas stations? Or you know, having that in mind of how do I feel? Do I do I need the bathroom? Do I need to take my time? You know, my Advil, my Tylenol. You know, am I in pain? Um, none of that. It's 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 normal life. Woo! Finally at the point, now also, it was in the last couple of weeks, my husband's kind of stopped thinking about it. He's he's finally, you know, kind of to the point of, yeah, it's, it's normal life again now. I'm doing things and he's not worried about me as far as checking on me. Do you need help? Are you okay? Um, let me do that for you. Like, you know, you can't, you can't lift something. He was a little worried about me moving that couch. It was <laughs> kind of because of my, you know, my abdomen, can I lift stuff? And then also more so with my shoulders and how they're feeling. Um, but I got through that, and so I think again too, him seeing me do normal things, that he's it's kind of leaving his mind finally of that, uh, you know, again that that I, I don't need as much help that I'm I'm kind of back to normal. So that's good. Um, new normal is I have to take a bag with me wherever I go. So it's kind of like <laughs> kind of a circle of life that if you know if you have kids. You know, you always have that diaper bag with you, or you take a bag with you for change of clothes, or you know whatever supplies you might need. And um, now it's just, you know, it's for me. Now I need, <laughs> I was liking this too, my diaper supplies, you know, my, my ostomy supplies. Um, so just in case something happens, what I have to always have a change of clothes and have my supplies with me. Um, try to make sure I always have water with me. So um, that's okay. That's, that's, that's an okay new normal. I can, I can handle that. That's easy. <laughs> yeah, so life is good. That's about it. Um, so like I said, this is the, you know, where I'm at at nine months. And it does say it takes, you know, about a year for things. So I will do another update at that point in time, doing a yearly update. There will be more updates in between of, I do have another scan, a CT scan in, I think, October. And um, so obviously, as I said, there will be some cooking videos where I'm trying to do things a little bit more healthier and and do those um recipes and do whatever is going on in my life so at this point it's been nine months and this is how things are going for me now so again i appreciate you guys hanging out with me and coming with me on this journey and um sticking around with me and, and sending your prayers again i will always take prayers <laughs> whether i'm feeling good or not so good you never know right never know what's going on but um yeah i appreciate that i appreciate 
You are hearing what's going on in your life. I hope you are all doing healthy, that you're all feeling well. I send my prayers out to all of you. So you guys, keep it positive. Go make it a great day. Bye-bye.